after much discussion in the council, I volunteered and said, look, I'd like to propose something for the consideration of the council. And wo ye baat hai, ki sirf government fund tak simit nahi, any fund coming even from a private and going to a private university as well, so long as they are established per law of the state or of the center, we should exempt it all. Quid pro quo, no quid pro quo for public cause or for no established public cause. In the sense, research goes to a university and they do it for larger public good. Or research goes to, or fund, research fund goes to a university. Maybe at the end of it, they'll have a patent. Maybe at the end of it, they will give you um, climate resistant seed varieties. This fund shall not be bearing the GST burden. After that, if the seed or the patent or whatever is commercialized and through that some money can be collected, that's a different story. So, ye bahut charcha ke baad, when I said this, I am grateful to every member of the council. Rate rationalization and the other is the GOM on real estate, both of whom had to submit or present a status report to the council post which these discussions can happen subsequently. The rate rationalization GOM presented their details as to what has happened till now and they have also called for a meeting 23rd of this month I think. Um, so the group of ministers on rate rationalization will meet among themselves but a status report was given. Then a GOM on the real estate also submitted its uh, status report. Um, so these were uh, scheduled statuses which had to be submitted. Then a status on, if many of you will recollect, we had taken this decision on the uh, casinos, online gaming and uh, horse race. And at that time, we said after the notification and after its implementation, six months after that, we will come up with a status. So even that status on online gaming and casinos was also presented to the council. I just want to give you one nugget from that online and casino based uh, status on uh, status which was submitted to the council. The revenue from online gaming has increased by 412%. That is, it has reached 6,909 crores. Just for six months, I'm giving you the figure. This amount, 6,909 crore, is earned in a period of six months. I'll give you the date. Uh, from 1,349 crore, it was before the notification issued on the uh, um, online gaming. The comparison is of six months prior to the notification and six months after the notification. And uh, the council decision was in October 23, if you recall. So, similarly, for casinos, the revenue has increased by 30% uh, from one. 64.6 crores earlier to 214 crores. Again, a comparison of six months prior to the decision and six months after the decision. So, the two, three statuses I've commented on, one is on the rate rationalization, the other is the real estate. The third is, after six months, I was expecting to have a status report submitted on the casinos and horse racing and online gaming. So that has been presented. Now, um, two new GOMs have been decided. One is on the medical and health insurance. It will be the rate rationalization GOM headed by the Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar, but with newer members added for this limited purpose. 
the rate rationalization GOM under the Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar will be doing its job. But under his leadership, with newer members who have volunteered for the limited purpose of medical health insurance related GST, we have told them that they will look into this matter and come with a report by end of October, just one and a half months time. And the GST council which will meet in November will finalize based on this report which will come from the GOM. So why did we have to refer that to the GOM, medical insurance related? There was good discussion, but the details of uh, the discussion made us feel that there is more to understand and more to take a decision on. For instance, many resident welfare associations have asked what if they do a group insurance for the residents? What happens to group insurance of companies? What happens to senior citizens? What happens to life insurance as opposed to term insurance? Uh, there are also requests already in the Commission to deal with medical health related situations, uh, uh, mental health related situations, not medical, men mental health related situation also was a separate agenda, but that got clubbed to this. So, the insurance related matters, the council felt because of the various dimensions which came in, which I have just narrated to you, it might be worth a group of ministers to very quickly look into it. And by end of October, if they came in with their suggestions, the November GST meeting could take a call on that. So a new GOM, which is essentially the same GOM as rate rationalization GOM, but for this limited purpose, newer members join in, and only for this limited purpose, they will submit a re report before end of October. Another GOM um, is for, I must, let me tell you a background for it. We had discussed about the compensation cess and it was understood and it is clearly Till March 2026 is when we can collect the compensation cess, which is the extended compensation cess. The extended compensation cess is being collected to repay the back-to-back -back loans which were taken and also to service the interest on it. Now, earlier also it was indicated, but uh, even now I would indicate probably by January 2026 itself we will be clearing the back-to-back uh, -back loan and the interest and therefore till March which is uh, about two months of compensation cess which would be left over but compensation cess ends by March 2026. It's always been one of the points in the council to see what are we going to do with that cess collection which was all the while meant for compensation giving, but after that, what is it that we want to do? About that, we have been saying, we will certainly discuss. So today in the council, the position on compensation cess was uh, very clearly put up, discussed. I'm just showing you a printout, but I'm sure the message will reach you all about what exactly was the situation. So. The total cess collection actual and projected up to March 2025 is 8,66,706 crores and compensation paid till 5th September 2024 is minus 6,64,203. Back to back loan repayable is minus 269208. So, uh, interest on it is about back to back loan is about 51561, which is negative. So, excess compensation to be recovered is a certain amount 
and the projected surplus which I told you will be two months of collection it will be in the range of 40,000 crores I'm not giving you the exact number but 40,000 crores is what would be the surplus after paying back the back to back and so on so this was presented and after that there was a lot of discussion so we have agreed to form a GOM which will now take it up to study every state and their discussion because Karnataka minister came up with figures which are applicable to his state so we've said all of the states which want to give theirs we are not compelling anybody but whoever wants to give can give and the group of secretaries and others would discuss about it so they will be again a group of ministers who will decide how to go forward in the name of compensation says it shall no longer be compensation post march 2026 but that says how to go about it what to do with it and so on will be discussed by the group of ministers then there is a committee of secretaries also decided today for the purpose of explaining and also uh, deciding on how to take the IGST forward a detailed discussion was held because today we have a negative balance on IGST so in this regard the council decided that to finalize the way forward a committee under the chairmanship of the additional secretary revenue will be set up with officers of both state and center you know now there is a lot of balance which has to be retrieved from states who had had excess IGST given to them over the period. So to discuss that there will be a committee of sec uh, secretaries who will explain how this whole thing has worked. Uh, there was also this uh, request again from Karnataka finance minister that uh, the, the formulation the modus operandi of IGST, how it works, how it is calculated, how it is uh, used for deploying resources may again be exp explained to whoever wants. There is no compulsion that everybody, some ministers felt that they would want to understand it better. So, Revenue Secretary would have an uh, informal meeting as and when they want. Not in person, whoever wants it, they can come on a video and talk to him to understand how IGST works. At the moment, the negative balance which has to be retrieved from some of the states which have had excess payment done will have to be done. But the committee of secretaries, uh, committee of officers will decide on to take it forward as to how. And that will have officers both from the center and state. So, uh, these are the committees and some of the decisions which have been given to committees. Uh, some with a very limited time span I again remind you on the medical insurance they will have to come back by October so on the um, there was one more which they have to come back by October IGST okay. on the IGST the secretary uh, the committee of officers will have to come back then um, the council has today decided that funds given for research to state affiliated universities or universities which are fun, um, uh, which have come about with state laws or universities which have come about with central laws or those institutions which have obtained the income tax exemption so three categories one universities and research uh, centers which have been established by a law of the central government to universities and research centers established by a law of the state governments or those institutions which as a third category those institutions which have obtained income tax exemption 
can receive research funds both from public which is government and from private and they shall not pay GST they are exempted from paying the GST so these are some of the main decisions of the uh, GST but there are a few more which uh, I request the revenue secretary and his team to explain because there are very many male decisions one of which uh, which i would highlight is reduction in the gst rates on specified cancer drugs you will recall that in the budget we had cut down customs duties now gst rate on cancer drugs are also being brought down it's being reduced from 12% to 5% in order to further reduce the cost of cancer treatment. Then, also decision on numkeens, extruded, expanded, savory food items. GST rate on these is being reduced prospectively, not retrospectively, prospectively from 18 to 12%. On metal scrap, reverse charge mechanism on supply of metal scrap from unregistered persons to unregistered person provided that the supplier shall take registration as and when it crosses the threshold limit. In addition, a recipient who is liable to pay under the RCM shall pay tax even if supplier is under threshold so largely i have recalled some of the major uh, decisions but there are other decisions also which have been taken which of course i'll invite the revenue secretary to elaborate on uh, the other decisions which have been taken by the council uh, are uh, relating to exemption uh, for the affiliation charges which are uh, levied by the boards, uh, whether of the centre or of the state, uh, for government schools. So this has been uh, exempted. Other uh, clarification that has been uh, uh, approved to be issued by the council relates to when an ancillary or intermediate services are provided by a GTA, a goods transport uh, agency in the course of transportation of goods by road and the GTA also issues a consignment note. In such cases, the service will be treated as a composite service, uh, composite supply and all such ancillary intermediate services like loading, unloading, packing, unpacking, transshipment, warehousing, etc will be treated as part of the composite supply, attracting the rate of supply for GTA. Uh, then there was another uh, decision which was taken to bring in renting of commercial property by unregistered persons to a registered person under RCM, under reverse charge mechanism. Uh, I may mention over here that already residential property, when it is rented, uh, by a registered person from an unregistered person is already at RCM, under RCM and so this anomaly uh, has been corrected by uh, this uh, decision. Then uh, there were uh, decisions regarding clarification of place of supply uh, relating to advertising services being provided by Indian companies to foreign entities. Uh, it has been clarified that uh, the recipient which is uh, a foreign entity uh, uh, will uh, uh, will will be the the, the place of uh, the place of residence of that particular entity will be the place of supply so it shall be exempt uh, from gst similarly place of supply for data hosting services provided by service providers located in india to cloud computing services located outside india has also been clarified uh, 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 to the extent that uh, the recipient of this service which again happens to be outside shall be the the place of recipient shall be the place of supply of uh, this services the clarification has also been decided to be issued for availability of input tax credit 
uh, on dem uh, demo vehicles by the dealers in case they have been bought by the dealers from the vehicle manufacturer there was a confusion uh, relating to this so this has been um, you know, decided to be clarified and then uh, the procedure and conditions for waiver of interest and penalty uh, in respect of the earlier tax demands of the first four years this was an earlier uh, decision uh, so those conditions uh, uh, the procedure thereof has been decided uh, in the uh, in this meeting today it has also been decided to recommend uh, the, the council has also recommended to notify that the last date for this shall be 31 3 2025 and it shall be operative from 1st of uh, 1st of November of uh, this year a mechanism has also been provided for implementation of the newly uh, inserted subsections 5 and 6 you are aware that uh, the input tax credit uh, was allowed retrospectively with effect from 1717 uh, 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 for the returns filed for the first four years till uh, October 2021 and so a procedure for uh, those cases has been uh, uh, prescribed and similarly amendments have been made in rules 89 and rule 96 uh, to provide for a clarification that uh, uh, IGST refunds on exports where some benefits of concessional or exemption notifications have been availed on the inputs on refund of IGST paid on uh, exports uh, two important uh, matters relating to technology uh, adoption uh, were also approved by the council one is to introduce uh, b2c uh, e invoicing you are all aware that we already have b2b in e invoicing uh, beyond a certain limit i think more than 5 crore uh, more than more than more than 5 crore more than 5 crore rupees of turnover we have mandatory b2b e invoicing and uh, so now we want to take it to b2c uh, e invoicing this will actually facilitate uh, the consumers uh, uh, by enabling them to check whether you know this invoice that has been issued is actually genuine or not but this will be done on a voluntary basis to start with in selected sectors and states so the law committee has been authorized to make uh, amendments in rules uh, and the law wherever necessary another uh, update that was given to uh, the council relates to the invoice management system and new ledger you are aware that uh, the gst actually works on input tax credit uh, and there are a lot of mismatches between the input tax credit on the one hand and uh, which is available and under the G under the various forms that we have mismatches uh, between gstr 1a and the gstr 3b the return and similarly between you know gstr 2b and gstr 3b on the credit side as well as on the liability side this uh, has led to a number of notices uh, sometimes you know in some of the years running into lakhs uh, which then causes inconvenience to the taxpayers on the one hand and on the other hand is also a means for tax evasion by uh, producing fake bills because there is no mechanism to actually check them so a whole new system has part of which has already been introduced in the form of gstr 1a and the part of which uh, will be introduced from first October uh, for the invoice management uh, this will also be uh, the, uh, the this update was uh, presented uh, to the uh, council and last of all a uh, few more uh, rate uh, uh, that is rate on car and motorcycle seats uh, the prospectively it has been decided to increase the rate on car seats from 18 to 28 percent it has been decided to clarify that roof mounted package units uh, air conditioning machines for railways that attracts 28 percent uh, of tax 
Similarly, it has been uh, recommended to notify GST at the rate of 5% on transportation of passengers by helicopters on seat sharing basis as is available also for uh, air travel uh, on uh, economy class. It has been decided to clarify that PLC or preferential location charges paid along with the consideration for construction services whether for residential, uh, residential commercial or industrial uh, will be also a part of composite supply of construction services liable to tax at the same rate and then uh, uh, decided to regularize some past period related to film, film distributor or sub distributor when it acts on a principal basis to acquire and distribute uh, films. Another important decision was taken to exempt import of services by an establishment of a foreign airlines company. Uh, there were some notices which were also reported in the media earlier uh, uh, from a related person or any of its establishments outside India when made without consideration. Uh, the council also recommended to regularize the past period on as is various basis. Thank you. So, floor is now open for the questions. 277. Please introduce yourself and then ask the question. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I am Priyashmita from Informist Media. Ma'am, you mentioned about the compensation sets and you said that after the repayment, something around 40,000 crore is going to be left uh, as surplus. Uh, has there been any discussion on how, what to do with that 40,000? And if you can just give some clarity on what all is this GOM going to recommend in their report? No, uh, not yet finalized on that. The GOM We'll uh, talk about it in detail from now on. Nothing has been particularly defined yet for them. No, nothing has been decided on that. Either. So let me clarify this 40,000 crore will be the excess in case the compensation cess is continued. But uh, but it will not be continued. It cannot be continue, continued, you know, as per the act. Because Once this you is, pay back. After you pay back, you cannot. So that's why, you know, before this excess actually happens, we have to come up with some other alternative in lieu of this Not for compensation. Not for compensation, but, but for, for something else. 16. Ma'am, I am Monica from the New Indian Express. Uh, Ma'am, I need more clarity on this, uh, on the decision on related party transaction. You said that uh, import of services by uh, these uh, airlines will be exempt. So, uh, it, this decision wouldn't apply to other sectors like IT companies, shipping? No, this is an issue which is very specific to uh, I, for, to the airlines industry because uh, the airlines industry uh, are airlines when they go abroad, they also get some similar concessions. So keeping that in light, uh, this uh, decision that has been taken is only with respect to the airline sector and not uh, for any other uh, for any other uh, sector. But sir, what about other sectors? There is lot of confusion uh, surrounding this uh, this uh, this law around uh, related party transactions. Uh, will the council will be coming with more clarity on this? Already, uh, circular has already been issued in June 2024, uh, whereby you know related party transactions, in case uh, they are meant for providing goods other than goods and services, other than exempted services, then the valuation uh, can be as is decided amongst them. So that has already been decided. Yes, there are some other issues. It's an ongoing exercise. They are under examination and as and when the law committee and the law committee and fitment committee have examined it. If there is a need, uh, we will issue more uh, clarifications as required. 107. Ma'am, when the uh, GST council clarified the uh, tax rate on online gaming, so there was some concern that it will kill the industry. But the uh, data that you have provided is saying that 400% increase in the tax collection. So that, that is only six months figure. Yeah, six months figure. So that means the industry and the players have accepted the new tax regime. So there is no uh, going back on that decision. 
Well, the council heard the facts and uh, that's where it was left. It was more a presentation of the uh, current situation because that was a promise given that after six months we'll review. And uh, it, it is more than six months now, but we've given a picture. 266. Uh, Ma'am, hello, this is Surbhi from Business Today. Uh, Ma'am, just wanted to understand the way forward on rate rationalization because earlier the GOM had indicated that they would like to continue with the status quo on rates. So, if continue you with? Continue with the current rate structure, Ma'am. So, if you could give us a way forward. No, uh, I don't know where, from where that uh, statement has come. The rate, ra rate rationalization GOM is looking into the issue um, of uh, rates and also uh, about the slabs, number of slabs. But the discussion will also have to happen from now onwards. The status report just said till now how many meetings happened and that's where it is. Some uh, recommendations of earlier uh, were all just indicative, nothing more. It wasn't given in detail. But from now when the meetings happen, they will talk in this detail about all of this. 17. Ma'am. Uh Alok Kriyashi from CNBC Awas. Ma'am, uh, online transaction पर digital transaction पर जो uh, GST लगाने का proposal था, उसको लेकर काफी कहा गया था कि इसमें जो पूरा जो GST है वो 18% लगाया जाएगा। उसको लेकर अभी क्या फैसला हुआ है? जो कई सारे payment aggregators हैं, उसकी मांग कर रहे थे। उसे लेकर क्या फैसला हुआ? नहीं वो तो नहीं देखिए आलोक जी ये जो मुद्दा जो council के समक्ष में था वो केवल एक स्पष्टीकरण देने के लिए था कि एक पूर्व में एक अधिसूचना जो जारी की गई थी वो अधिसूचना के तहत में उनको छूट का लाभ टैक्स छूट का लाभ उनको मिलता है या नहीं मिलता है तो वो जो छूट थी वो इसका इसके ऊपर में विचार काउंसिल ने प्रथम बार नहीं किया इससे पहले भी पूर्व में भी किया था और उस समय भी यही स्पष्टीकरण दिया गया था कि यह जो छूट है यह छूट केवल बैंक्स के लिए है लेकिन यदि कोई छूट देनी है उनको वो एक अलग मुद्दा है और अगर इस प्रकार की छूट की कोई मांग आती है तो उसके ऊपर में पुनः से विचार फिटमेंट कमेटी जो हमारी बनी हुई है वो उसके ऊपर में विचार करेगी और काउंसिल के समक्ष लाएगी तो वह एक बिल्कुल अलग मुद्दा है कि उनको पेमेंट एग्रीगेटर को ये छूट देनी है या नहीं देनी है इसके ऊपर में कोई चर्चा आज के दिन में काउंसिल की मीटिंग में नहीं हुई मुद्दा आएगा तो उसके ऊपर में जो हमारी निर्धारित प्रक्रिया है उस प्रक्रिया के तहत में उसका परीक्षण करके और उसके ऊपर में एक उचित निर्णय काउंसिल लेगी 77 मैं मैं शैलेश हूँ ए नाइन न्यूज एजेंसी से मैम जो हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस की बात हो रही है किसकी हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस के जो जीवन बना है जो अक्टूबर में अपने रिपोर्ट देगी उसमें हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस है या लाइफ इंश्योरेंस भी है टर्म इंश्योरेंस भी है उसमें सब है ग्रुप इंश्योरेंस है या प्रेसिडेंट वेलफेयर एसोसिएशन उनके तरफ से कुछ करते हैं इंश्योरेंस के नाम पर वो वो सब आइटम्स को ये ग्रुप ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स अध्ययन करके अक्टूबर तक मीटिंग रिकमेंडेशन देंगे थैंक यू सेवन Um, good evening. Uh, Ma'am, my question is on the online gaming uh, part. Uh, were there any discussions held on the outstanding tax liabilities of the online gaming, especially the show cause notices that were issued to them? There was no discussion on uh, the retro, the old uh, part. There was no discussion. Sir, so, any roadmap on how will this be treated? The matter is sub judice. We await the decision of the courts. One, uh, you know, there was one report uh, on GOM on real estate also. So what was, uh, yeah, what was discussed uh, in, in, in the council? No, they just gave a status report on what they've done. Okay, that's it. No uh, discussion. Okay, thank you. Uh, 95, please introduce us. Uh, good evening, ma'am. This is Sumit Chaturvedi ET now. Uh, did anything come as far as the electric vehicle charging stations and GST and or rate relief on them are concerned? Uh, on the EV charging station, the matter was actually deferred. There was a recommendation, of course, from uh, the treatment committee, but the council, in its wisdom, thought that you know this needs further uh, this needs a re-examination. 
so as to whether you know this is actually an electricity supply or not and what rate if it is not an electricity supply uh, then what rate it should attract the matter has been deferred for uh, re-examination by the fitback मैं मैं अनिल कुमार हूं स्वतंत्र पत्रकार हूं मैं मेरा सवाल यह है कि जिस केदारनाथ बद्रीनाथ या फिर वैष्णो देवी के लिए जो हेलीकॉप्टर सेवाएं दी जाती है उसमें जो जीएसटी ली जाती है क्या उस पर भी आज कोई डिस्कशन हुए नहीं हुए उसके ऊपर में नहीं हुआ लेकिन जो सीट शेयरिंग पे अगर कोई लेता है जो हेलीकॉप्टर में जाने वाले जीएसटी के ऊपर अभी बताया लेकिन वो बद्रीनाथ या केदारनाथ से स्पेसिफिक स्पेसिफिक नहीं है लेकिन अगर वो उसमें आता है तो वो उसको पांच प्रतिशत तर लगेगी गुड इवनिंग मैम सपना यू मैम वन ब्रॉड क्वेश्चन सम ऑफ द स्टेट्स आर इंडिकेटिंग लाइक यू नो वन दिस कॉम्पोजिशन सेस कैन यू बी लाउड प्लीज सॉरी uh some of the states are indicating when this compensation says matter came up for discussion so some of them are indicating that spoke karnataka gave some numbers which we have said please submit it we will have our team looking into the number ma'am meena mittal from money control uh, the section 11a amendment that was introduced as a kind of a legal safeguard against retrospective tax demands what is Corresponding circulars against it were they discussed today? Section eleven A, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nothing was discussed regarding section eleven A. It is a. Uh, let me, you know, clarify. Lot, lot of you know, media uh, attention has been given to section eleven A. This is not a usual section to be uh, used. You know, this is a section to be used in the rarest of the rare cases. So it is not to be used. Uh, generally, or you know, as a practice, as a matter of practice, for which we will, uh, we would like to, you know, issue a circular at this point of time. Seventy-three. Ma'am, Tarun from Z Business. Uh, Ma'am, kya aaj ke meeting me real estate sector, especially, uh, ek uh, concern tha ki jab hum flat karite hain, to usme land plus construction cost hoti hai, to GST jo hai. वो केवल कंस्ट्रक्शन कॉस्ट पर लगना चाहिए तो उस पर कोई आज डिस्कशन हुआ कुछ क्लैरिटी उस पर बट ऑन उस पर डिस्कशन हुआ आ, लेकिन केवल जैसा आपने कहा कि वो जो है केवल कंस्ट्रक्शन सर्विस पे लगनी चाहिए वो आज के दिन में भी यही स्थिति है कि कंस्ट्रक्शन सर्विस पे ही लगती है लेकिन उसको कंस्ट्रक्शन सर्विस पे लगाने के लिए चूंकि फ्लैट की रेट में लैंड की भी वैल्यू होती है तो उसको एक डीम्ड वन थर्ड जो है वैल्यू लैंड पर एट्रीब्यूट की जाती है और उसको हटा करके उसके बाद में किया जाता है तो ये एक सोचा गया था कि ये हर केस में वन थर्ड जरूरी नहीं है हो कहीं पे लैंड की कॉस्ट ज्यादा हो सकती है कहीं पे लैंड की कॉस्ट कम हो सकती है तो उसके विषय के ऊपर में चर्चा हुई थी और अंत में निर्णय ये लिया गया कि जो रियल एस्टेट का जीवन है वो इसका परीक्षण करेगा और परीक्षण करके अपना सिफारिश काउंसिल के समक्ष रखे थर्टी हेलो मैम हर्ष कुमार दिसम स्टैंडर्ड न्यूज So, ma'am, uh, what states actually suggested on insurance, uh, GST on insurance rate? No, actually speaking on insurance, there were a lot of discussion about which one is going to be taken up. Will we reduce the rate or will we exempt it? For who should be exempt and who should not? What happens to group insurance? Then uh, are we going to then carve out only for uh, senior citizens? Uh, will this not complicate the implementation? And therefore, a lot of these uh, issues were brought up for further discussion. And that's where we thought it's better that this goes through a rigorous looking into by the GOM, and then they come forward because these aspects were differently talked and. Uh, Uh, the question was raised on that. Any um, any, any specific numbers? What numbers? Oh no. Three. Uh, Ma'am Sadhat from Times of India. Uh, I have a uh, couple of questions. One is, uh, Ma'am, what is the? Uh, did the council discuss the future of CES in the sense that will it continue or not continue after 
uh, from 1st of April 2026. Number one. Number two, on that research part, uh, will the clarification apply prospectively or retrospectively? Uh, whether it will start from uh, 2017 itself. And the third question is, you talked about IGST excess payment. What is the extent of excess payment? One minute. Your first one was on compensation. Compensation. Set. And the second one was on the research. Okay. The compensation says, I would like to say this for the benefit of many of you who repeatedly have heard me say this, but I want you and myself to have some clarity, even as I talk. Even at the time when the compensation cess was extended, after due consultation with the Attorney General uh, then and also in the Council several times, it was extended only because we had money to be paid to the states through the back-to-back -back loan and that was back-to-back -back for the sake of giving compensation which we could not collect because of COVID. So, since that compensation was strictly for, since that cess was strictly for collection of compensation related monies, it was calculated as to what is the total amount which has been borrowed for the back to back and the interest which is due. And it was extended clearly, legally also, only to such an extent that you have to pay the back to back loan. And that is why uh, I remember the first question, uh, sorry, I forget your name, Pratusha? Priya. Huh, Priya. Although we said extended till March 26, if the payment gets cleared by December or January of 25, December 25 or January 26, Post that strictly you can't be collecting the compensation cess. The constituting of GOM to talk about the compensation cesses future because beyond paying this backlog loan which is the back to back loan and the interest for it, there cannot be a collection of cess for the compensation or compensation related purposes. Because that particular compensation cess was purely for those first five years when you had to pay the states uh, the gap between the protected and actual revenue. That saga ends with June 30th, 2022. But because it had to be uh, paid through borrowed money, legally after consultation we have extended this compensation cess to such a time that we can pay this back and at that time tentatively till 30th, 31st March 2026. Now if we pay that back by let us say January 2025, strictly this cess no longer can be called compensation cess. Clear till then? Now after that if the cess has to be collected, it can't be compensation cess but if it has to be collected, what? How do we do it? For what we do it? What rate at which we collect? What happens to the cess? That is what the GOM is going to talk about. Anything else on 45? No, wait a minute. He had asked three questions. I have finished one. The second, on the research, I just want to give you a bit of a detail. And this is absolutely research related funds going to the institutions and the notice which had gone to seven such institutions was not an attempt at ter tax terrorism was not an excess i say this with a certain responsibility because where there are interpretation related issues, an officer in the field will certainly want to be sure that he is doing his job, he is collecting the money that he should collect because some of these research funds which have gone to some institutions had a component that there could be some kind of a quid pro quo and therefore the officer 
had to, and they are not one officer, one jurisdiction. They are different officers, different jurisdiction, all acting per the law before him. There are seven such institutions to which the notice went. Therefore, this came up for discussion in this scale, a lot of uh, outpouring naturally. Now, before I went to the GST Council, in some occasion where I met the Honorable Prime Minister, he himself told me, Re budget mein aap anusandhan kosh karte ho, aapne research ke liye national research fund karte ho, research ke liye fund allot karke institutions ko dete ho, usme GST ka kya vishe ban gaya? You should propose to the council that there should not be tax on research, research funds. So, after much discussion in the council, I repeat, after much discussion in the council, I volunteered and said, look, I like to propose something for the consideration of the council. And wo ye baat hai, ki sirf government fund tak simit nahi, any fund coming even from a private and going to a private university as well, so long as they are established per law of the state or of the center, we should exempt it all. Quid pro quo, no quid pro quo for public cause or for no established public cause. In the sense, research goes to a university and they do it for larger public good. Or research goes to a fund, research fund goes to a university. Maybe at the end of it, they'll have a patent. Maybe at the end of it, they will give you um, climate resistant seed varieties. This fund shall not be bearing the GST burden. After that, if the seed or the patent or whatever is commercialized and through that some money can be collected, that's a different story. So, ye bahut charcha ke baad, when I said this, I am grateful to every member of the council. Each one, and I, the first voice I heard from my left was of a lady, and that turned out to be West Bengal's finance minister. She said, I support this. And then, so on, many other states also joined, and there was complete unanimity on this proposal which I put forward. I am grateful to all members. So, the decision on the research fund is that there can be a state law or a research institution which could have obtained income tax exemption. Fund going to any one of these from the government or from private, quid pro quo or no, will be exempt. No, not retrospective, because they will get regularized. It will be regularized on seventh. as its various basis was the decision of the council to regularize. Regularized it. As if as people well have as. paid, they have paid. If they have not, not then we will give them the benefit. And there are only seven such notices which have gone. That will be assessed by the team and it will get regularized. IGST excess payment. Do you want to? Uh, no. So uh, you know the, the the point is that there is a uh, there is a deficit. There is not an excess. There is a deficit today. The deficit amount is about fourteen thousand crore rupees. So an in certain periods there was a surplus. The net surplus is about one lakh sixty five thousand crore or so, which has been paid to the states as well as to the center. So fifty percent is a portion to the center 50 percent is to the states and there is a formula on the basis of which you know we apportion it amongst the states so that is excess is one surplus is 165,000 crore roughly but now we have a deficit of 14,000 crore 7,000 crore will be borne by the center 7,000 crore will be borne by the states so previously there was a formula but now that formula has become dated so we want to update that formula now with passage of time. So how that formula should look like a committee of officers headed by the additional secretary will look at. I think this is the last question I have to put. 45 first, then 70. Krishna Bhatnagar with uh, NDTV Profit. Uh, I just like to ask um, on the B2C e-voicing bit, 
uh, some more details on that and also some clarity on uh, economy class air travel if there are uh, reductions on that and uh, the ACs for railways. I think there is some reduction on that as well. Oh, no reduction. Also, AC on railways, there is no reduction. The rate was 28%. There was a confusion uh, because ACs attract 28%. Railway parts attract uh, 18%. And uh, so there was this doubt. But uh, the railways parts, you know, they, uh, the ACs are not you know, included as railway parts. So that is being clarified to be 28%. Regarding economy class, there was no... Uh, decision. I only meant. Uh, I only mentioned economy class airfare to equate helicopter services uh, when uh, they are available on seat sharing basis, like for religious purposes, Kedarnath, etc. Ex for example, but could be any uh, purpose. So there is uh, that five percent GST. It's being clarified. That was already five percent. It's only being clarified. It's it, it's being exempted prospectively because the doubt was there. So a separate entry is being. Uh, created and past period will be uh, on uh, as is various basis so that would be regularized and the third part you mentioned is about b2c invoicing, e invoicing. that's only a pilot project uh, so you want to uh, 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 the b2e in, you see e invoicing basically see as i mentioned what will happen is that uh, the suppliers initially on uh, a uh, voluntary basis, we will give them a portal, we will give them a site, they can, you know, uh, use the services of the portal like they use for B2B and then the invoices can be issued to the customers through that portal. So what happens uh, then is that uh, the customer can actually verify it or the other design e-invoice and then they upload it to our portal in a real-time basis so that the customer can actually verify as to whether this uh, invoice has actually been issued or not and once you know this is issued from the system it gets reported obviously you know it will get filled into their returns so the tax will have to be actually paid uh, uh, on these e invoices like you know uh, on b2b so other than empowering the consumer the customer uh, it will also help us in uh, it will also help us in providing refunds once you know we uh, implement this we test this foreign tourists when they buy goods over here and when they take them back it's an export of that particular goods but we are unable to do so because we are of course able to verify that uh, this good is going out but whether that good was actually uh, bought in our country and tax was paid in our country or not we are not in a position to verify that so with this system, the customs authorities at the airports will be able to verify as to whether these goods which are now being taken back to their own country, whether uh, they have actually been bought in our country or not and eligible for uh, a, a refund or not. So these are some of the benefits uh, of e-invoicing. Other than this, you know, benefits of tax evasion, it will also help in reduction in tax evasion. Last question, 17. Ma'am, a clarification. Hai. जो पेमेंट एग्रीगेटर्स का मुद्दा जो जीएसटी का है वो आपने फिटमेंट कमेटी में भेज दिया है लेकिन जो उन पे जीएसटी सर्व किया गया है 600 करोड़ रुपए के आसपास का वो अभी स्टिल वैलिड है या उसको अभी उसका उसके उसकी क्या स्टेटस है अभी वो नोटिस जो है लगभग 5 अगस्त के आसपास में दिए गए तो अभी वो नोटिस का वो पीरियड होता है उसमें अभी वो नोटिस को जवाब देंगे जो कंपनियां हैं वो उसका जवाब देंगे और वो उसको जवाब को ध्यान में रखते हुए और उसके ऊपर मैं ऑर्डर पास किया था। वन लास्ट पॉइंट व्हिच इस पन इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट फॉर यू बैक अगेन मेनी ऑफ द स्टेट्स वेर रिक्वेस्टिंग इफ जीएसटी काउंसिल मीटिंग्स कुड बी हेल्ड इन देयर स्टेट्स। केरला हैज बीन वेटिंग फॉर लास्ट टू थ्री इयर्स। दे रिपीटेड uh, Meghalaya Chief Minister suggesting that we should go to Meghalaya for a council meeting. So was Gujarat, so was Uttar Pradesh, so was Bihar and many other, Telangana and many other states also have offered. So it could be that the council will take a call where they want to hold the next GST meeting and from then they will be moving around to different states. 
so that states also feel that they've hosted the gist. Yeah. <laughs> Pris is also uh, of course you will come. Request. You will come to cover, won't you? So they are making the request. Yes, sure. <laughs> Good to do it. So thank you very much. Thank